In the previous video I showed the creation of a disc image used in Basilisk 2 that we're going to use on our blue SCSI, but unfortunately you can't just copy this directly over to an SD card. We need to do a couple of things first. So here I've just put in a SD card, in an SD card reader, and I'm going to open up Disk Utility. Now I need to make sure that the format is XFAT, but also that it's master boot record. So in Disk Utility, I've clicked on View, Show All Volumes, and then this gives me the option to see the SD card itself, not just the partitions. From here, we can choose the Erase option, and then we give it a name. Make sure that it's using the XFAT file system, and that master boot record is selected. This will go away and format the volume into something that the blue SCSI is expecting. You don't have to use XFAT as the file system, you can of course use FAT32, but for best results, XFAT is recommended. Once the volume is formatted, we can simply copy over the disk image. This may take some time depending on the size. The thing I really like about the blue SCSI is the fact that there's zero configuration other than giving the file a particular name. On the GitHub website there is useful information about how you go about this and I'll leave a link in the description below. Basically you place the file in the root of the file system and then you give it a particular name as long as it's not longer than 32 characters. So in the example here we can see the file is called hd10 underscore 512.hda. This means it's hard disk SCSI ID 1 LUN 0 with a sector size of 512 bytes. So this is what we're going to call the file on the SD card. What's really useful about this is you can also include a more descriptive name for the file for future reference. Just don't forget to include the HDA file extension if you've been playing around with this disk image in Basilisk as previously mentioned. And that's it. Eject the SD card, pop it into your blue SCSI and plug it into your retro Mac. 